Good morning. It's Wednesday, August 28th, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, James the Just, Part 12, Praying for People. And our scripture is James, Chapter 5. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Intercession and reconciliation, that's the ministry of the body of Christ. Abraham was the beginning of the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. They were to intercede, bring God's message to the world. The church is the new Israel, and our calling is the same. We are to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost world. That's not easy. Intercession is standing in the gap for the lost, the sick, and the needy. And when you stand in a gap between God and the people God has told you to help, you're doing what William Carey, the father of modern missions, said. Attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God. It's like a small child turning over his security blankie to dad, trusting that dad won't hurt him. That Charlotte, North Carolina farmer in 1934 had spent a good deal of time battling a stubborn farm during the Great Depression. Raising a family was tough work then, as it is now, only in a different way, still tough. The Depression had spread spiritual apathy in the city. But when asked, the farmer lent out one of his pasture fields to some business leaders for a day of prayer. A man by the name of Vernon Patterson led the prayer this way, O Lord, raise up from Charlotte someone to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Those businessmen erected a tabernacle of pine beams in the city, and for the next 11 weeks an evangelist by the name of Mordecai Ham shattered the complacency of church-going Charlotte. The farmer who lent his pasture for the original prayer meeting was named Franklin Graham. During the revival, Franklin's young son Billy responded to Christ and committed his life. These days we call him Dr. Graham. Only eternity will reveal how many souls were touched for Christ, beginning with one farmer willing to let go of a field for a while, and one businessman willing to trust God for the sake of the gospel. The question becomes, how can I trust God like that? Well, do you remember what happened when Mrs. Job looked her man in the eyes and said, Hey, you've lost it all. Children, possessions, reputation, and even your health. Why don't you just curse God and die? He answered back, Though he slay me, I'll worship him. That was Job choosing to trust God. Do you remember Naaman the leper? God's prophet said, Go dip in the Jordan River seven times to be healed. Naaman grumbled, but he went. And each time he bobbed up in the water, it was Naaman choosing to say, Here, God of Elisha, take my choices. I trust you. The big fisherman Peter knew something about faith that had fizzled. Outside Pilate's house the night Jesus was arrested, Peter was confronted by a little girl who thought he was one of Jesus' disciples. Peter cursed, I don't know Jesus. It was Peter's unbelief, no trust at all. After the crucifixion, though, he went back home to do some fishing. What happened? He had a meeting with Jesus, the resurrected Lord of the universe, and Peter found out that he was forgiven. All of that cowardice and backpedaling, forgiven. Peter chose to trust, and God taught him for the rest of his life how to trust. For you today, preacher, I want to trust God that way. How do I do that? Answer, you just do it. You choose to do it. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.